Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. First of all, I would like to uh, also thank Brother Umran in Dubai for making it possible for um, Carol and I to be here this, uh, this evening. Um, also, I'd like to thank all the, the uh, brothers and sisters here who've uh, given us such a warm welcome tonight, a very warm welcome. Um, and so, as an act of charity, I'll try to um, be as brief as possible which is very difficult for someone who's as long-winded as I am. Tonight's topic is uh, the Quran in my life, and I've twisted that topic. You know, it's always the lecturer's uh, prerogative to twist the topic. I'll stick to it somewhat, but then I'm going to deviate a little too. Um, many people ask me who it was that um, led me to Islam. And they expect me to give them some so-called Muslim name, like Muhammad or Ahmed or Abdullah or Abdurrahman or Abdurrahim or even Brother Ismail, as, as important as he was in my life. They, they expect me to give them uh, a Muslim name or an Arabic name. But in actuality, I have to uh, admit that it was Jesus, peace be upon him, which may sound a little bit shocking, but it was, um, it was Jesus' words as found in the Bible, New Testament, that set the stage for my conversion to Islam. I know that many, that may sound strange, because the Christian uh, missionaries have tr traditionally thought that Jesus' supposed words in the Bible were the vehicle for leading someone to Christ and to Christianity. The missionaries are only partially correct the true words of Jesus do lead the sincere heart to, to Christ but at the same time they need that same heart away from institutionalized Christianity as it exists today let me share with you a part of my life up to the point where the encounter with Jesus, with the Jesus of the Bible and the Jesus of contemporary Christianity prepared me for the acceptance of the Quran as the final revelation the final revelation to my heart, soul, mind and strength as Jesus might have said I won't go all the way back to the beginning but I'll go back to maybe grade school and uh, in grade school, I guess I was a pretty good student. In fact, I spent all of my spare time um, studying. I had this desire to know about everything. In fact, I didn't care about people at that point in my life. I would sneak out on my parents' farm in Indiana, and I would sit in the middle of the field, and I would read all day long until my mother would call, call me to come and eat. Then when I was in the eighth grade, something happened that that changed my life very, very radically. I was um, severely injured by a car as I was traveling to my great-grandmother's funeral. In just a few seconds, my life changed very radically. I lay in a hospital bed, unable to move um, my body. My head had been shattered, my brain had been torn, my ear had been ripped from the side of my head, and I was partially paralyzed on one side of my um, on one side of my body and I was taken to a Catholic hospital and I'll never forget inside the hospital on the wall across from the hospital bed there was a giant crucifix with the representation of Jesus peace be upon him upon the, upon the crucifix and a Catholic nun told me that the man who was hanging on that crucifix died to save me I didn't understand it um, but at that point, I came to believe that that man loved me and would take my pain as an offering for my salvation. At that point, I decided to live my life completely for him. Well, because of that accident, I wasn't able to engage in heavy, say, sports activities, etc. So I did spend most of my time studying, and I became very politically interested. At that point, the United States was involved in the Vietnam War, 
And I can remember one day, finally, I was sitting in class and it hit me that I was related to those people that my country was destroying. At that point, I decided that I needed to get involved to try to convince the American people that simply because someone had a different color of skin and lived in a different part of the world that they had souls and they were just as important as we were. Although we, te- you know, we Americans tend to think that we're better off than, uh, better than everybody else in the, uh, in the world. Shortly after that, I discovered a book of Roman Catholic theology along with an old Bible. And I read both of those from cover to cover. My sense of justice was tempered by what, was, what I saw as Christian love. And my interest in logic was satisfied by the elaborate logic of the Roman Catholic Church. Again, at that point in my life, I decided that not only did I want to live my life completely for Jesus, but I wanted to live my life as a Roman Catholic priest, more specifically a, a Jesuit. I knew that if I I took that step that the church would never allow me to marry, but I decided that that was a necessary kind of sacrifice, maybe an inhuman kind of sacrifice, if I were to love God and to serve Him completely. At that point, the church needed doctors, so I decided that I should should become a doctor, and so I got my degree in chemistry and psychology and prepared for, for medical school. Slowly, my desire, though, to become a doctor uh, changed. I was horrified at the idea. In fact, the day that I applied for medical school, I can remember praying to God, please help me to be rejected so I don't have to do this, so that I can uh, just become a priest and forget about it. But unfortunately, um, all the medical schools accepted me, and I thought, oh, no, this is a sign from God, so I should become a, uh, I should become a doctor. So off I went, studying all those horrible subjects, at the same time, I, I decided that I did not want to change the spiritual part of my life, that that was tremendously important. And so I, spend, I went to Mass, of course, every day. I spent at least three to four hours in prayer, tw- two times a day with an examination of conscience, etc., etc. At the same time, I found that I was becoming more and more depressed. The church did not have the answers to the questions of life that I needed. And so, like many of the people who were studying for the priesthood, I turned to alcohol. In fact, I don't know if you know Punch and Judy, uh, the old, uh, you know, sort of puppet uh, uh, show. But in the Catholic Church, we used to joke that there were two things that would get a Roman Catholic priest, either Punch or Judy, either alcohol or a woman. For me... It was punch. The alcohol got me. And pretty soon the alcohol was not enough, so I added drugs to the list. I was getting more punch. And my life had become a nightmare at that point, and religion was not helping me. So finally one day I told the church, I'm not going to continue studying medicine. I'm going to uh, study philosophy. I'm going to get my Ph.D. in philosophy. Somehow I hoped that by getting a doctorate in philosophy that I can make sense out of my out of my faith. I can make sense out of a faith that told me that somehow a man was God and that because someone died I was free from my sins. And I could not make sense out of this. I had been taught that this was a mystery. I should simply put my faith in it. And uh, I could not do that. Not, uh, not as an American who wanted everything to make sense. I did take the step. I withdrew from medical school and I spent two years working in the parishes. I taught religion to high school students. I worked in the prison. I studied philosophy and theology. And I generally strengthened my involvement with the church. And as I said, I spent days in silence. In fact, several days in silence a week uh, praying hour upon end to God to make me a truly submissive servant. And at the same time, I was continuing with the, um, with the drugs and alcohol. As I studied Christian theology, I was led further and further away from Jesus. And as I looked at the Christian ministers in America, I realized that they too had some severe doubts about their faith. One writer who had tremendous influence on me at the time was a theologian by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, For those of you who don't know Bonhoeffer, he was uh, 
Lutheran theologian during World War II when Hitler had him um, Hitler had him killed. And in Bonhoeffer's very interesting book called Letters and Papers from Prison, he wrote the following passage that was very shocking for the Western world. He said that God is teaching us that we must live as men who can get along very well without him. It's a very shocking kind of idea about God, that we should live our lives as though we can get along without him.